I'm Chosen Architect, and this is All The Mods 9, and today we are going to be farming some of the most cursed mobs in the pack. Hopefully you guys are ready. So this is episode 60, and that means it is world download day. So be sure to get your world download if you're a supporter of any tier, whether that is on Discord, on Patreon, on Twitch, or even here on YouTube. And guys, let's get on with today's video. So remember this mob farm? Yes, the mob farm where we're farming massive amounts of diamonds and emeralds. Well, today I want to change this up a little bit, and I want to turn this into a mob farm that farms quite a bit of resources. Now, in doing so, this is going to require a lot of exploring. We're going to have to explore not only through a bunch of different biomes, but we're also going to have to farm underground for a very specific mob. Ah, yes, and I'm sure the title has given it away because the big mob of today is going to be the Stoneling from Quark. Now, the Stoneling from Quark is quite insane. It has the ability to drop a ton of different items. One of them, though, more specifically, is a heart and it's a very specific heart, this one being the Heart of Diamond. Now, if you look at the mob drops itself, you may just think that this mob only drops these two items, but you would be mistaken because this thing can drop any item that it is also holding when it spawns. And the pull of items that it can actually hold is quite a few things, and we're gonna see all of those when we get to farming it. Now, this Heart of Diamond is also pretty useful in itself, allowing you to make a Pickering, which I would honestly like to make, it's a really cool tool and also upgrade it to a flamerang. And the flamerang is a, you know, a burnless version of that tool. All of this is pretty cool because we should be able to use vein miner on this tool. And it's kind of like a long range mining weapon. Now, some of the other mobs that I want to go after are a few of the creeper overhaul creepers, which allow us to essentially farm up all kinds of different resources, including logs and just have an infinite amount of those things as if we weren't creative mode enough. Now let's start off our adventure with Cork. That's right, Cork was just recently added and added that stone link that we were talking about. We need to find that stone link and it has its own mechanic associated with actually being able to interact with it in the first place, let alone find the darn thing. So one of the first things we need to do is find ourselves a glimmering wield. This is a biome from Quark, and it may be a little ways out if you've had a older generated world, as this is a biome that is added by Quark, and Quark was, like I said, just recently added. So when we run a search for this, for me, it's gonna be several thousand blocks out, but it shouldn't be that far for you uh, if you had just started a world. But it's saying it is about, uh, it keeps looking and looking and looking, and there it goes. It says 5,000 blocks, apparently it is out uh, in this direction. Also, keep in mind, this biome is about Y level zero, so you may be better off actually looking for this underground uh, if you were to use the nature's compass. Look, we have one that's even closer, just for me going down to Y level negative 33. Now you may be wondering why, I, why do I even need to go to this biome in the first place? And the reason why is because there is a specific item that we actually need that allows us to interact with those stone links. Because spoilers, if you do not have this item on you, well, they will just run away and vanish. So after walking all the way out there, well, walking and flying, this is the area. It says right here, the glimmering wield is going to be down in this area. So let's do the sinful thing of just going all the way down and just avoiding everything. I, I don't think we have to worry about taking damage, but finding this should be near Y level zero and we are way high up in the air, so. Yeah, this could take a minute to get there. Aha, and wouldn't you know it, it's right here. This is the biome that we need, and these are the shrooms that we need. This is that special item that we are going to need for those stone links. So I definitely want to grab a few, as many as I can, and we need to basically put these in our offhand, and this is how we're gonna be able to creep up on some stone links. I was wondering why my frame rate was so low. I was like, what is going on? Notice there's a giant structure burning in the distance. Oh, that's never good. So after a bit of roaming around in the cave, I see it on my mini map. It does look like there is a stoneling somewhere. It actually shows up on the mini map, which is kind of cool. I just gotta, I gotta locate exactly where this stoneling's at. Looks like it's like in the wall somewhere. It is definitely over here. You can even see it on the mini map. I think if I open this up, we can see right here is a little stone link. Really hard to see, but that's what they look like. 
Okay, so right here is a stoneling. So after a little bit of time of wandering around, I have a stoneling right there. Now, I just want to walk up and shift. I have to hold shift and I have to lure it over here ever so calmly. Let me try and actually go over here and try and lure it. I got to hold down shift and then I'm going to right click it with a swab. And look, it's following me. And if I was to kill it, it would drop the items it's holding. And it also drops that heart of diamonds. Now, if I didn't have this shroom on here, it would just poof into nothingness. It just disappears entirely. It would, it would scream and it, it's gone. So now that we have this, we now have the ability to duplicate them with a spawn egg. Please don't patch this, please, please. So making some GM chicken feed, we've now got to hunt out the chicken. And I think this would be the perfect time to use my entity tracker right here. And I just set chicken to the thing I'm tracking. And now it's going to start looking for chickens. Now on my way to find that chicken, I did come across a couple of snails from Naturalist. And I have seen the Easter egg that is associated with this. I just want to show you, this is really funny. If you set a name tag to Gary from SpongeBob, this will then become Gary from SpongeBob. <laughs> how adorable that is oh i love that i'm gonna save gary and bring him back home i've got to say this is so cool look at this it even says like the health and shows you the breed timer and everything on these chickens oh that is so cool okay well we're about to make this chicken disappear there we go and now we have ourselves a stoneling egg and that means we can replace one of our other spawners with a stoneling now. Now, because I have far too many of these guys running, I think I'm going to put it into here, potentially, into the stack of these. Um, let's put it into the lower one. Well, if you're shutting this off, let's go ahead and put this stoneling inside of this one. I think this is my fastest spawner I have. That's not one of my maxed out llama spawners. And now this is a stoneling in there. Oh, and this is going to get ridiculous. So I'm gonna sit here and babysit this as this should spawn in stone links. Oh, there they go. Okay, and so the stone links should be collecting items in here. Oh, and there's a ton of resources. It's going into this. Okay, so right away, we're going to have to get rid of these um, Pathfinder's feathers. But we are getting like skulls and all kinds of other stuff. We definitely need to make sure these are being voided inside of here. Okay, that should have those voided. Okay, we're getting saddles and name tags now. That's interesting. And tons of ender pearls, it seems like. And I believe we're also getting gold and diamonds through here and lapis, but it already has a place to go. So yes, these are farming all kinds of things. I think to be able to fully see what we're getting, let's go ahead and turn off our exporting item card. And we'll just take a look at how this is filling up here. Okay, so we see we are getting redstone dust even from these stone links. We're getting emeralds, we're getting gold, I believe, from the stonelings, and iron from stonelings. We're also getting skulls from creepers and zombies, and also saddles and name tags. And golden apples, apparently, from them. Okay, and there's the lapis. So yeah, we are definitely farming lapis as well. There's some golden horse armor. This is insane. Um, and, and you could just keep making more of these. We're also getting tons of these hearts. I think once we have, like, a stack of these, we really don't need these for anything. So it might be best to just simply void them uh, now that we have over a stack of them. Yeah, just look at all these items. That is just, that is just pure ridiculousness. All of these items we're getting, and they're just going immediately into our, our storage. So now after getting that set up, we can now see that we are farming, it, it also seems like all of the horse armor. So we are farming gold, it looks like diamond and iron armor, and we're also farming golden apples, which is kind of nice. Some saddles. Just things that are honestly kind of uncommon to find. Um, and, and to be able to farm them is really, really nice. So now that we have stonelings out of the way, I have compiled a list of some of the best mobs I think that we should be farming in that farm. And that's just based on some of the resources that those mobs actually provide. Now that first mob on the list is this thing, a beach creeper. This little guy right here. We definitely want this little fella inside of our mob farm. This little fella is going to provide you with sand, gunpowder, prismarine shards, seagrass, and nautilus shells. Now I decided to turn the lights back on, but this little guy right here is a dark oak creeper. This is another one that you probably want on your list because it's going to provide you with some nice things like dark oak logs. 
And then the counterpart to that creeper is going to be this one, which is the spruce creeper. And now it's gone. Now this next one may seem a little weird, but I'm going to be making myself a conductor's cap. And I'm pretty sure we can farm infinite alloy this way. So notice this is an incomplete hat. If I place it on here and then I give it a precision mechanism, I should be able to, for example, make this process. It is a multi-step process. So there we go. And then we just apply some string to it. And then that should make a conductor's cap. And if I place that on top of an anisite casing, this conductor's cap will make a conductor. And we can also mob swap this guy and this guy, when killed, should drop andesite alloy, but it looks like it drops a cap. Well, I guess it's just a chance for it to drop one. Either way, we're going to be the weirdo that farms it. And then last but not least, our crazy witch spawner is going to be the other spawner that we're going to put into this system. Oh man, I tried to do the conductor, but it appears like I can't get the spawn egg from the conductor, but everything else I was able to get the spawn eggs for. Either way, this is going to be a great set of mobs to get placed in here. So let's go ahead and put them inside of the same area as the stonelings. So we'll go ahead and get a creeper, uh, let's see, beach creeper, spruce creeper. And we're just replacing all of the stone, uh, the cave creepers, because we already have those. Those are fantastic. Um, and then I am going to swap one of these out. These, not these spawners. We'll keep the creeper ones right there. Yes, we'll, we'll knock out one of the vindicator ones right here. And let's use our pneumatic craft set up here and perfect we should be able to place our witch spawner in um and then i think all of our stuff probably went into here yes including our spawner and i just need to put my redstone link back on here and then we need to put our emeralds on it and then this should be ready to rock and roll so this should now start spawning in witches oh boy and also spawning in all of those different types of creepers all of which should be generating new items. Holy smokes, the witch hats are kind of ridiculous. And now I've got to get to filtering. So yeah, first things first, we definitely need witch hats like filtered and we definitely need these voiding uh, immediately. And then everything else will be allowed through. So we can start, for example, putting shards in and then we can have sand going in one of the drawers. It's just a lot of stuff now going in. We'll have our logs. Two different types of logs. Oh boy, there's so many goodies that we are now getting and automating. There's sugar. Oh, there's like all the seagrass. I don't know what we would use. Oh, actually, I do know what we could use seagrass for, I guess. But cobwebs, holy smokes. The witches just give so much stuff. Potions, spider eyes, just all kinds of goodies. Crisis averted. I now have all of these items now flowing in. And just from those alone, we now have like infinite logs. It's just absolutely ridiculous. And I love me some ridiculous. Now I do want to try something with that conductor. So I do have the railway conductor in here and I actually kind of wonder, can I spawn it in the mob duplicator? So I have this set to pulse mode. I have it receiving some of our essence that we have just a ton of built up right here. And let's see, can we do this? Will it actually spawn it? And the, the answer is yes, it will spawn it. And it doesn't actually spawn it with the hat. But I wonder, does this actually drop the items though? Oh, by the way, these will push the buttons. So they will summon their self. That is kind of goofy. Oh, and they do. They do drop it. Oh, that is a way to farm andesite alloy. Now let's go ahead and set this up. So I don't want to set it underneath the redstone block, but I do want to set it, for example, like right here. And I should be able to give this a tank full of essence and then give ourselves a point on the other side and put this inside here. And this should uh, start working. We should be able to set this to pull. That should start pulling an essence, hopefully from our ender tank. Uh, if this wants to work, there we go. I ended up placing it on the bottom here and right clicked it to make sure it updated. And there we go. We now have this here and this is just going to up and run and summon the mobs every time, which uh, is kind of interesting. We should see it spawning right there and then immediately getting killed. And I really don't want this to be any faster than it currently is. We can put this range upgrade in here and that's going to give it a spawning range of anywhere within this bounds, allowing more of them to spawn at one time, which is also making this faster. 
So, there we go. That should be working just fine. And hopefully we have enough essence. I think we are producing enough. But if we start to run out later on, then we can always shut this off. But this is to essentially start farming andesite alloy for us, which is just kind of ridiculous. Oh, also, I almost forgot. We should probably put Gary back in our base. It's so adorable. Now, another type of farm that I would actually like to have running as well is an auto fisher, because one of the things I haven't done a lot of is just fish. So we really don't have a lot of those resources lying around. I think one of the best places to go fishing is going to be in an ocean biome. That is, of course, the best place to fish. I want to use a couple of different methods for fishing. So first method is I want to try the reliquary, which we did try setting up. This one actually utilizes a fishing rod. This is the same fishing rod that I used to fish up the, um, the Patrick star bee. And so I can put this in here and then I can just click it to turn it on. And that should technically auto fish for me. Now I do need a method of picking up the items. So to be able to pick up the items, I'm going to place a block up here. And then above that, I'm going to put a barrel. Now, oddly enough, I did notice that the barrels no longer accept more than two stack upgrades in this current version. So a little bit odd. I don't know why that change was made. Maybe some sort of balance change. And I don't know if it was from Pepper or it's just exclusively this pack. I'm sure I'll find out whenever I play another pack, but it should now collect with my advanced collector. Should pick up all the drops that this collect from fishing. Um, now, I do wanna try out a couple of other methods of fishing. Now, the next one I wanna try out is going to be the marine fisher. And this one should be able to be placed just like so, like right above the water. And we should be able to send the items directly into the top to a barrel as well. Except this one will need to be configured. We'll have to push the items into this barrel. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put the upgrades in this as well. But this one does need power. So it will need to be powered through something like a flux point. We can place that there, connect it into our power. And then we should be able to speed this up even faster by putting in speed upgrades. Well, not putting them there, but this should run pretty darn fast. It looks like it's collecting a ton of fish this way. Now the next one's going to be the aquatic entangler from Thermal. This one also requires a little bit of space. So if I get an angel block, I should be able to place it somewhere here in the open. And this one does need to be in an ocean if you wanna farm ocean related items. So I'm gonna go ahead and place that there. And we do need some other things in order for this to work. To make it go faster, we are gonna need some thermal upgrades. And this slot right here is going to be for some aqua chow which is something that we actually need in order to farm things specifically from ocean biomes. So just like this, I have sort of a functional setup for this. We will put Aqua Chow right over here and we'll put that inside of this container. And then that should fill Aqua Chow into this slot. And then if we put this upgrade in, which is a resonant integral component, this is going to scale the factor, scale the speed by four. And this just over time will fish up a lot of ocean related things. This thing is really cool because it can fish up, for example, tridents. It can also fish up, uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, sponge and a couple of other ocean related things. Now, as far as fishing speed is concerned, we can definitely tell who is king. However, I don't know exactly what all this one can fish and how this is actually fishing. It is producing experience, which you can also collect. But this one is definitely king. This is producing all kinds of stuff. I didn't even know it could produce the antique ink, which is amazing. It's, it's already produced all of this in the time that I have just set up this one machine. And this one will farm some cool things too, like ink and stuff like that. But wow, this one is insanely fast. I was not expecting that. Now I went ahead and accelerated this as you can see. And yes, it does farm up tridents just like you see here. Now, why am I farming all of these items? Well, I wanna prepare myself for something new, a new adventure per se. And that is going to be the dive into Greg Tech, which is something that I want to get into now that we've reached this point. And some of you may not like that. And I completely understand if you do not want to see anything Greg Tech, but there's going to be more than just the Greg Tech grind and journey. I'm going to try my best to make this as nice of a watching experience as possible. And I want to try my best to progress through it as well as I can while also building. So we can consider episode 61 to be that starting journey. Now, there are several dimensions that we have still yet to explore, and I want to explore them as we also progress through Greg Tech. 
So I hope you guys still enjoy this journey and join me along the way. And well, the best way to do that is by clicking that subscribe button if you haven't already. And well, giving this video a huge thumbs up. Because with that, we are going to have to bid farewell to episode 60 and say hello to what is going to be episode 61, which is our Greg Tech journey start. Now, I do want to mention again, if you are a supporter of any tier, be sure to get your world download over on the Discord, discord.gg forward slash chosen architect. And if you haven't become a member yet, be sure to check it out if you haven't already. Um, just a little bit of support goes a really long ways in helping keep these videos flowing, even when we get into late episodes like this, so I don't have to be as reliant on the whole YouTube revenue system. And if there's any builds in that world that you personally enjoy in this world here, be sure to copy them over into your world if you feel so inclined by using the schematic cannon or even the copy paste gadget. So again, I do want to say a huge thanks to my supporters over on Discord, also on Patreon and on Twitch. You guys are absolutely OG and even here on YouTube if you've become a member through this new service. And of course, how can I not forget you subscribers? Thank you guys so much for deciding to click that subscribe button as we reach nearly 600,000 subscribers. It's an absolute insane number to think about. And to that, I bid farewell to episode 60 and prepare myself for episode 61 as we are going to grind into the Greg age. Oh boy. And with that, it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that huge thanks is going to go out to... If I can spell things right... <laughs> it's going to go out to bars kickoff. If I said that right, thank you so much, by the way, for your amazing support over on the discord and becoming a discord premium member, supporting me in one of the best ways possible. Oh, thank you guys so very much. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. And of course, as always, thanks for watching. Bye.